wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, featuring your hosts, Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And before we get going on today's podcast, what's up when you're feeling depressed, is we'd love you to jump on to nourishingthemother.com.au and join our tribe. There's a quick little couple of boxes for you to fill out with your name and email address where you then are part of our tribe who gets a once a week email where we wrap up everything we've posted and published and podcast on with links and descriptions so you can pick and choose what you want to listen to. And then sometimes we will also send you a second email that's about our musings, our awakenings, toolkits we've discovered with ourselves or with our kids that, you know, the stories are really speaking to us and we would love to share with you. So if you'd love to dive a little bit deeper and more frequently with Nourishing the Mother, please jump on to nourishingthemother.com.au and join our tribe. On to today's podcast, Bridget. Today's podcast, which is what's up when you're feeling depressed it really came from some musings that I was having within my own psyche because I have quite a rich inner world if I'm, if I'm going to be honest what does that mean to you well I sometimes think I probably should talk to my kids a bit more or interact with my baby a bit more when I'm home with her but it's because I'm constantly talking to myself in my head or <laughs> thinking about concepts or you know just musing on existential life you know? yes <laughs> and so this came to me because I was feeling in a real funk today I was just feeling really depressed and I've been noticing over this last week or so that I have had a lot more of these feelings of being a bit down and really my energy being off and just really soft and wanting to kind of curl up into a little ball um, which I haven't felt for quite a while and so I've been thinking about what we have these feelings for and mm-hmm and how they serve us and ultimately, the, I guess, a toolkit that we can use to, to transform it when we're ready to. And so that's why I thought this would be a great topic to dive into. And it, and it speaks a lot to ownership, which is something that we're really, really big on all the time. You and I are yeah. constantly talking about um, ownership of, of our own um, emotional state. Emotional state, yeah, yeah, particularly as a role, you know, in the dynamic as a mother where it can be so easy to put that onto your kids. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're, we're really big on, on kind of owning what's our stuff mm-hmm. um, and, and avoiding projecting onto our kids when we can. And obviously it's impossible because we're all human, but, but, but becoming aware of our own patterns that, that kind of come up in the dynamic mm-hmm. is really powerful. Mm-hmm. And I guess a great place to start in terms of is, is this concept of depression, which everybody experiences. So we might be in this... Um, kind of golden age in terms of looking at mental health issues in society and, and the labelling of depression or anxiety. But, I mean, these are transient states of, of emotions that everybody goes through and, and ultimately some people get more stuck in them and than others and then they start to manifest as a condition that yeah. that, that becomes difficult to get yourself out of. Yeah. Um, but ultimately this, the, the feelings of depression come up within us because often we're projecting some kind of fantasy onto our re- current reality, thinking that we should be anything but where we are right now or doing anything, something else than what we're doing now or being somebody else who we are right now. Well, that something would be better than where I'm at. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and often when we get stuck in that thinking, we then start to look for evidence to make that thinking true, which sends us further into this spiral of funkiness yeah. and darkness and dinginess and you know, almost that desire to want to go and have a nap, which is where I found myself today until I, until I kind of thought, no, I actually don't need to go and have a sleep, even though it might be nice. What I really need to do is move my body, you know, which is, which is what I did with, with And how did you experience. come to that as a decision, though? Is that because you know from previous experience that, that moving your body works? Yeah, yeah, and I was also thinking about some of the, the, the thoughts that are going on in my mind at the moment around my, my wellness um, and around concerns I have around like this hernia that I've got and just, just me thinking mm. about my body mm. right now and the absence for me at the moment, it, there's a strong absence of physical exercise in my life at the moment and there's, you know, I really don't meditate often at all now and those are two really key things that enormously benefit our physical and mental health mm. and they're two things I wasn't doing. So... I first of all, I put Sylvia in a pram. It was beautifully sunny, and I went for a walk for half an hour. Mm-hmm. And I could even feel the shift happening as I was doing that. So, 
this is the thing. There's so many different ways we, we have at our disposal to take ownership of the feelings that we're having and create change within us. Mm. And, but it comes from the, our willingness to, to be introspective enough to take ownership of, of the state of mind that we have. I was about to say that because in doing that, you're not in your victim state of I'm so depressed and my life is so hard yeah. and, you know, I'm victim to it and there's nothing I can do. Mm. You're saying this is a state for feedback how am I going to, one, help my body shift it and to mm. work on why it's showing up? Mm. Like that's it's a very empowered state of being as opposed to victim state of being. Yeah, and it, it, it is. And, it is. Yeah. and I think, you know, another thing that it, it comes from this idea of like sitting with these uncomfortable feelings and thoughts within me and going, where have I felt this before? And, and because it doesn't matter what we do within our lives, unless we go to the challenge, it's just the challenge just keeps changing form. So yeah. you can leave a what you would term a bad relationship or you can leave a bad job or you can move house or you can take a holiday, but wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. So I so got that with your holiday blog post that you'd written that, yeah. you know, we think we're taking a holiday from our life. But we're not. It often amplifies. It does. You know, that what what is already to some extent dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because you can't escape you, and all mm. the stuff that is that is rubbing you up the wrong way is all the stuff that you're is that is key to your next evolution, mm. right? And so I was kind of getting God damn it. I know, I know, <laughs> damn it. I know. Wouldn't it be nice to just believe the ads and jump on a jet plane and forget <laughs> all my problems? <laughs> like hello. <laughs> and um, but you know, I was thinking about. Other times where I felt like in this, you know, cycle, I was going back 10 years ago to when I used to have to do uni assignments. I didn't want to. And, you know, that same kind of feeling was in me. The drudgery. The drudgery and just the yeah. the, 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 the spiralling, woeful self-pity, you know, mm. that was tempting me down that path. Mm. Yeah, I get that. You know, like, and, we all, and this is what being human is. This, is. this is the full spectrum of feelings that we get to have. And the awesome part is we... When we allow ourselves to feel those things, we also get to feel the the, the polar opposite of those. Which That's is, right. It's, which it's, is the, the awesome, rapturous, great stuff. Yes. And, I mean, you and I say that all the time, but I feel like often we don't really get the meaning of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, opening ourselves up to, to more pain also opens us up to more pleasure. Yes. And vice versa. You can't just chase the pleasure without the pain following, right? Yeah. So it. And, and you also don't want to rationalise away the feelings either. I mean, like one, one facilitator I've been working with was telling me about what she does with in her daughter. Like her daughter might be feeling really funky and she's like, so go to bed. She's like, go to bed for a couple of days. Allow yourself to actually be in that state mm. as opposed to because some of us run a pattern where, oh, no, I can't feel that, so I'm going to get busy. Not safe for us to you feel know, that. It's not safe mm. for us to feel that. So if, if, if your pattern is oh, no, I'll just go work more when I get depressed or, oh, no, I'll just go clean more, clean more, you know, which is a classic one too. It is a classic. We do hear that a lot in our yeah, tribe. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a, it's like a rep repressive mechanism for feelings that are uncomfortable is to go and clean them away. Like Ultra my, control your environment. Yeah, my dad's like that, like classic like that. So, yeah. So in, in every Oh, my sister-in-law and mother-in-law too, and I, and I often look at this, you know, form of neurosis, and we all have a form yes, of neurosis, right? It all manifests in different ways. But the cleanliness one I find incredibly, yeah. incredibly interesting. Yeah. It's almost like the more we crave order on the outside, the more there's disorder on the inside. Yes, because everything's just always transforming yeah. all the time. Yeah. And so it, it's almost kind of creating, you know, when, when you know what your pattern is, the willingness to create a pattern interrupt to that particular mm. pattern. So if, if you are the crazy cleaner, gosh, let the house get messy and actually sit with the discomfort of those feelings. That's what we talk about with leaning in. Yeah. Is, you know, when those feelings are overwhelming to you and you just need to control your environment in order to make it all mm. okay or, or seemingly, you know, that you can survive it is what would happen in that moment if you just sat there for 10 minutes and didn't. Yeah. And just sat there in those painful feelings and allowed them to be in your body knowing their feelings mm, and just bathe in it yeah, yeah. Like for that, even if it's only a couple of minutes longer than what you normally would just to know that you can handle it because it's yeah. like it's like it's what it's like what we talk about in aligned parenting it's like why widening your window of tolerance to yes. a, a, a space in your psyche that you're finding yourself yes because there's actually freedom there when we can Yes. know that we can have more governance over these and know we don't need to run from them yeah when it's safe for us to be there and it's also to the extent with which we can be with those with ourselves is the extent to which we can be with those with with mm. others and our children mm. so making more safe for you 
in essence, completely transforms your reality, mm-hmm. right? Because all of a sudden what used to trigger you with your kids no longer does because you have you have a um, non-trigger with it. There's, there's a level mm-hmm. of spaciousness in mm-hmm. being able to sit in that feeling without needing to solve it or wipe it away. Mm-hmm. And I love that because it just means, I mean, obviously that, that growth never goes away and the, the next trigger comes in, but, but it's like you're stacking up belief in yourself that you can handle it. Yeah. Which is where it's the evidence, isn't yeah. It? Which is where ultimately our self worth grows. Yes, exactly. Which is where our ability to hold space for others grows. Yes, our empowerment. Yeah, yeah, which is really really beautiful. So on this topic of leaning in, I think it's really worthwhile that part of the leaning in is is questioning, you know why is this here? That all emotion is feedback, and mm. all emotion is. Um, follows thoughts and beliefs. Mm -hmm. So we can literally change our emotional state and therefore our physical state by changing our thoughts and beliefs. I mean, Mm -hmm. this is kind of the the intertwining theory behind the mental and the emotional, the physical and the spiritual, right? So when we're saying leaning into these feelings, we're saying, yes, widen your spectrum of tolerance. Start to find safety in more emotion and feeling. But at the same time, it's recognizing, I think part of the safety creation of that is recognizing that you're not trapped or suffocated by this feeling, that this feeling doesn't mean X, Y, and Z, which is often part of our story and Mm. our belief system that have created the feeling to start off with. Mm. And that the feeling in itself is feedback. It's feedback to wake us up to something. It is a feeling designed to get us to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it safe by starting to know that that it's another form of love for Mm -hmm. us Mm -hmm. as opposed to something that's scary and it's not safe for us to be in. Mm -hmm. So we sit in it, we feel it, and then we have a level of, of reflective questioning. And I just thought, Bridget, might be worth touching on some of those sort of thought processes behind the feedback yeah. side of emotion. And, I mean, ultimately feelings are, are um, they're, they're sensory experiences of our body and our senses are a result of us filtering our reality. Yeah. So feelings are what we might say in inverted commas like lies because they are one-sided perceptions. We're not able to perceive the full reality. Our feelings just give us a taste of what the reality is based yeah. on our beliefs and values and things like that. So the feeling is simply the the experience of our one-sided view of the world. So if we're feeling depressed, if we're feeling lethargic, if we're feeling all those things in our body, it's because we're perceiving our world in a certain way mm-hmm. and we're also hiding the other part of our experience that's not in our you know, immediate awareness that is at the same time as we're feeling depressed, it's feeling elated mm-hmm. because or every, if you imagine like, you know, life being yin and yang and you can't separate those two things, they're, they're in conservation all the time. It's just like a magnet, you can't break a magnet apart. A magnet has both positive and negative charge, just like every feeling has an opposite and um, attached charge to it. We're just not aware of it. Mm-hmm. This is what's um, termed, you know, universal laws and the constant mm-hmm. balance that's inherent in everything. And so when we're feeling, and the more polarised the feeling, so depression is quite a polarising state in our psyche, if you imagine it's very, very low. Um, It's very, very one-sided in its perception of the world. That's right. And then you've got an elation, which is kind of very, very high up, kind of almost manic Again, one-sided, yeah. You know, if we, if we all imagine, good or all bad, it yeah, almost is, that's, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's kind of you know, all one way or all the other. The, the, what our psyche is always seeking to do is bring us to an equilibrium point, yes. which is you know the balance point. The challenge and the support, the good and the bad yeah. that we can see is equal and therefore we're free to make a choice. That's yes. it. And so often some good questions to ask yourself if you're feeling those deep depressions is, is, is what we said earlier, which is, you know, what is the fantasy that I'm, that I'm running here? You know, what is the hidden, you know, point of elation that that I'm kind of stuck on that I'm not willing to see. So it's recognising that you're stuck in a state of depression and one-sided downness, which is the direct result of your psyche trying to pull down or or equilibrate your one-sided fantasy that maybe you're not even aware of. Yeah, you're likely not aware of. So you're saying, I'm feeling this emotion, which means I'm missing its its sister counterpart, its other balancing portion, which is fantasy or infatuation Mm -hmm. so what part of this story am i in fantasy or infatuation with yes sorry i just thought i'd break that down no no i like that you're breaking it down because it can be really easy it can be easy to skip over it can be really easy to skip over and so it's simply just getting curious about what Mm. it could be that you're that you're not aware of 
the, the, your psyche, the, the, your intuition through the feelings that you're having is trying to bring you aware, awareness to, but you're kind of not able to see. Would you say that the way to go about that is to dilute or distill down exactly what it is that you have these feelings of, of heaviness and depression and, and um, dread about? Yeah, like yeah. That you whittle it down to an area of life or a particular circumstance? I think it's really worthwhile asking yourself if it's a certain pattern associated with it. And so particularly, I mean, if we're talking about motherhood here, sometimes it might be, particularly for new mothers, a comparison of life before children to life now mm-hmm. or the comparison of your perceived freedom before you had children to your perceived lack of freedom now. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the the fantasy that, that some mothers build during pregnancy or if they're trying to conceive about what motherhood's going to be like and this rosy picture that they might have of it, the more that that is a polarised, one-sided fantasy view of what it's going to be like, the more the reality that you're unconsciously creating is going to be almost like smack you down in, mm-hmm. in essence because n- none of life is all roses and, and loveliness. Life is always a hybrid of, of support and challenge constantly, and the more that you're polarised in your perception to see it one way, the more your psyche and your reality needs to create. Or we'll challenge the opposite, the opposite yeah. to help you integrate, basically. So even it has even, to match the balance or the intention. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, the reality is that this happens through the co- through what we co create with our children. So sometimes, if you have a fantasy on this perfect baby. And how easy it's going to be. You're going to have a challenging baby to help you yeah. equilibrate yourself there. Yeah. And so, so much of, of the mental health challenges that we find in motherhood is as a result of the fantasies that we project onto what motherhood's mm. going to be. Mm. Because motherhood has just as, has all the same kinds of challenges that any other part of our life is going to have. And, you know, if you're finishing up work and you're going to become a mother don't think that you can run away from any of the challenges that you face in a work environment because they'll simply just change form mm. until you grow through those challenges. So the challenges that you that you didn't want to face with your boss, you'll somehow face in your motherhood until you grow mm. through that challenge and it, you know, and you can transcend it. Mm. This is why this whole concept of running away is futile. You can never run away. You'll just keep running into yes. whatever it is you need to grow through. I just love these conversations. Honestly, I could just have this conversation with you all day. I just <laughs> it constantly fascinates me. Yeah. The depth to which we are so entangled in in what we don't realize we're entangled oh. in. Like it's just it's fascinating to me. And and then when you start to apply this toolkit to your own life, you start to see it playing out in those around mm. you. And it's just the most extraordinary perspective shift yeah. to see that it is, and, and it's all, but it's also important to recognise that that even when you start to know a toolkit, it doesn't mean you get to get to. Oh, you're not someone. above it. You're not above it. No, oh, no, no. You know, and it's certainly the minute that you think, I mean, because it's funny, because in our learning to loving group, sometimes people, you know, will comment, "Oh, like I just really felt like I could sit in that situation. I just wasn't triggered at all." And and I'm like, oh, don't say that because the thing is, you trigger's coming. <laughs> it's coming because we. we are it's okay really, to have plateaus though. <laughs> yeah, you can have, and the, the, this is the plateaus are the point in which you're, you're integrated you've integrated. Something. Yeah. Until you go through your next identity crisis, right? Because yeah. when, when we're climbing these like spheres of evolution, it's like it kind of it kicks off this next identity crisis. Yeah. Um, until you kind of integrate, and then you have it never it never stops. Right? There's, there's, there's no such stops. thing as enlightenment no. because we're always evolving. If we're really mm. if anybody who is truly enlightened would just poof into light because they would have yeah. no reason to be here because they would have nothing to grow through. Yeah. To be on this earth is to grow, which means we're constantly going to be faced with things we need to grow through. Yeah. And so, I guess I love like you know coming back to my day today and my morning and feeling like how I was feeling. I, I just love this this toolkit and what we talk about here because it it allows us to sit you know in some of the the shittiness yeah and and ask for the wisdom in it yeah you know as opposed to looking for ways to numb out of it or get out of it scenery yeah make it wrong make it wrong or or, or beat ourselves up or or yeah beat ourselves up about it yeah Yeah. it creates enormous freedom yeah Yeah. and particularly you know that there's there's classic ways in which to do that and a classic way that so many people these days 
beat themselves up is by going on social media and comparing your life to, yeah. <laughs> to the fantasies that they see on social media. Gosh, glossy social media. Yeah. 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 And so even noticing some of your own patterns in relation to that can be powerful. Mm. So I would suggest, you know, looking at the patterns that you've got around. So, yeah, coming back to yeah. looking for the fantasies is how we got here. Yeah. Was how to actually distill down what area of life to start questioning where what fantasy you're running. Yeah. Is to, to look at the feedback of, of looking for a passion mm-hmm. of when you start to feel these things. So when you're feeling funky or depressed or just out of alignment, you know, what, what is the belief or the feeling that you keep running into? Mm. What, what's the running story that you have around yourself or, or around whatever the catalyst is for this feeling within you? Because when you start to... And look at always and never statements too. Yes, always like, and never statements. This always happens. I always end up here. They never provide this for me. I'm never getting out of this. Yeah. Like the always and never statements are really worthwhile when we're running a story. Yeah, because it's, it's this imperative language and like nothing nothing is black and white like that. In nothing the world. is always and never. Because yeah. sometimes you're lazy and sometimes you're really motivated. Sometimes you are lovely and sometimes you're mean. Sometimes you are on time. Sometimes you're not. Like everyone <laughs> is true. Everyone's everything. And so as soon as we started to say, Use those always and never language. We're polarised. We're polarised. And we're kind of only seeing what we want to see. So just noticing that the the, the style that you have with yourself Mm -hmm. as well. And questioning what that story is behind it. So if it's motherhood, if it's the house, if it's the partnership, like what it actually relates to, right? And so starting to look for what the fantasy is. How would life be better with this? You know, if, the, if if things were like this, it would be da 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 da, like that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. and and interestingly, that, that I mean, that's a great one, and I think that that comes up a lot in relationships. You know, it's so easy to project outwards. If if my partner just did this, then it would be better, yeah. or if he just picked up after himself, then I wouldn't have to feel like this, or whatever whatever the outward projection is. Yeah. Um, is then useful to then go. You know, what would the drawbacks be if you had that outcome that you that you yeah. constantly seem to be hooked on? Yes, this is equilibrating the fantasy. Yeah, yes. yeah. So sit, sitting with, and if you say that there would be no drawbacks, it just means that there's even more work to do because yeah. because you're only seeing it that one way. Yeah. Um, another thing that, that that I mean, sometimes depression can really serve as a strategy within us to get a, an outcome that we want. Mm. You know, to maybe get the support from somebody close to us that we can't consciously ask for Mm. or outwardly say that we want Mm. this is like the family dynamics or the the relationship dynamics at play yeah which is fascinating this is again the function and the dysfunction yeah and I mean we are incredibly brilliant at getting our needs met and and sometimes we'll get those needs met in ways that that we might judge as wrong or, or kind of not really constructive but on some level if they get the outcome we want then then they kind of are constructive that's why they're there that's why they're there that's why we have these these stays within us to get to get what we need um, it can really also be a mechanism from our own subconscious to bring us back into alignment with what we truly value mm-hmm. because ultimately you cannot escape what you truly value because what you truly value is driven by your own voids within you so it's driven by what you really believe is missing in your life and your voids are usually created when you're very young and they often can sometimes be hard to put a finger on but your life will always bring you back on some level, to what you truly value. And sometimes you'll get there by feeling really depressed or by getting sick or mm. by, you know, having a bust up in some kind of relationship to get you authentically you. Mm. So this, again, is the function and the dysfunction. Mm. And, you know, you can get to this point when you start to look at some of the patterns that are within you and, and where the depressive feelings coming from, where the funkiness is coming from, what are they getting you to, what were the outcomes that they're getting for you. Because it's mm. an incredibly powerful question. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, there's enormous, I mean, so whole relationships thrive on some of these, you know, kind of dynamics, right? Mm. Like, you know, generations of families who run mm. depression through generations is sometimes what holds families together mm. because they need it. So if we judge it as wrong, we're not seeing, we're not seeing the divinity the perfection. within it. Um, another area to look at is, you know, what are the parts of yourself that you are most uncomfortable with? So these are usually parts of ourselves that we will project out onto other people and sort of disown. So if we're kind mm. of getting really judgy about the people around us, you know, are always angry or they don't listen to their children or they just maybe they eat crap food or whatever it is that mm. you're projecting out into, onto other people. I love how they were all your values. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I have to go back and listen to this podcast because I'm probably talking to myself. I know. I was thinking talking to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but ultimately, all those things that we project out onto other people are, are our own disowned parts. Yeah, that's and, right. And we know this because when we see it around us, it pushes our buttons. Mm. And it pushes our buttons because it's going, hey, your intuition's going, hey, that's you too. Yep, that's you. Yep, that's you. And the more that you love that, the less you're going to see it in them and it's not, not going to annoy you as much. Yeah. But the more polarised you get in terms of making those things outside of you, mm. the more your psyche and subconscious will want to show you that that is you too. Mm. So you will get snappy with your kids, so you will get depressed, so you will eat crap food, so you will do all of the things that you are making outside of you so that you integrate them and learn to love them as part of you too. Mm. So it's just so interesting. And creates more love in, in dynamics around yeah, you as well. Yeah, and it creates connection mm. because it breaks down barriers because, yeah. the, because the judgment, yeah. because, you know. Beware judgment and pride yes. because I always think whenever we're, um, sitting in a, a huge amount of, of pride and therefore not seeing where we're not, you know, it's like being elated with, with yeah. ourselves, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Being in fantasy with ourselves. So a huge amount of pride often is pride comes before the fall, yeah, right? Totally. I mean, how often is that mm. banded around in, you know, I don't even know how many centuries that particular saying has been around for, but it, it all implies this universal law of, mm. you know, what you're judging, you're going to be creating yeah. until you love it. Yeah. So beware pride and judgment because whenever you're sitting in a huge amount of pride or you're sitting in judgment of others, well, on some level you're creating an experience mm. in which you will be forced to love it. Mm. So this is, again, getting – if we can do the work, um, you know, like lessons with the feather, we don't need yeah. to unconsciously create lessons with a sledgehammer in which to learn it. This is this whole process of – mining the gold and having a toolkit that you don't have to wait years for. Mm, mm. It's where our whole philosophy comes from. But I'm always fascinated by, um, I wouldn't say always because you can never use always and never can you bridge no. it, but I am conscious of, of looking for myself when, I, when I'm sitting in pride or in judgment because mm. then I, I know that's a feedback to me to equilibrate what I'm sitting in pride about or what I'm sitting in judgment of. Mm. Um, and in essence, I guess part of me does that knowing that if I don't do it, I'm going to come a cropper. Yeah. And I mean, the reality is we're, we, we're living and we're, we're going to come a cropper anyway, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but it's almost like if you have this toolkit of questioning and the ability to kind of see that there's an, some wisdom in it, it almost kind of maybe takes the edge off a bit. I don't know. Yeah. What do you reckon? I don't know. Um, look, I think I think it's just, again, levels of evolution. So the yeah. speed at which you grow, the, the breadth and, and depth to which you grow mm. and probably the level of, of integration and connection you can feel in that mm. process mm. is determined by the toolkit that you have, right? They're no different to the quality of life. It's determined by the quality yeah, of questions right. you ask yourself. I mean, I think it's kind of the same thing. Mm. So mm. I think we're just about out of time, Bridge, and that's where we need to wrap up. Yes. But I, is there anything else you want to add in? I just would really love to be ultimately the – the really key thing is to get curious about why I'm feeling like this. So feelings are feedback. Feelings are feedback. Mm. And particularly if you're noticing this pa- a pattern for you, maybe like open and have a notebook or have like a little sheet in your phone where you can record, you know, perhaps the triggers of the feeling that you've got. Like so what happened before, the yeah. feeling that you're now feeling or the descendants into despair. That what happened feeling. that moment right before. And, mm. and when when – you know, have you felt it beforehand? Because likely random memories will just pull out of your, you know, psyche and, and kind of give you t- give you hints of where you felt it before. Yeah. And you can start to see, oh, okay, this is a pattern. This is something for me to, to transform now. This is something for me to learn from. Yeah. As opposed to simply be at the whim of, of your feelings and like, like kind of, a, you know, a boat crashing against the rocks. Yeah. You know, to, to help you bring in some self-governance through these questions to help you, you know, manage yourself a little bit better yeah. um, and, and grow with more intention, I suppose. Mm, absolutely. Mm. So please connect with us, nourishingthemother.com.au. You can have a look at our products, which is forward slash products, or our online programs, forward slash online programs, if you'd like to really dive deeper into your particular toolkit and start applying more of what's possible in your life Mm -hmm. if you have five seconds and you're really getting some fantastic stuff out of this podcast way that you can love us back a little is just by rating us on itunes or by writing a review on facebook it just really helps in this social media land of just keeping us up there and, and fresh for 
other mothers to find, which mm-hmm. is, you know, incredibly helpful for everybody. So if you have five seconds and you want to love us back, that's what we would really love from you. Uh, we're on Instagram as well as Facebook as Nourishing the Mother. So please connect and join our tribe. If you have podcast suggestions or questions, we would love to hear from you in the form of an email or contact through our website. There's a contact form. Uh, or Facebook message. Yes, yes, we love hearing from you and it's just such a joy to, to hear how the podcast is resonating with our tribe. It really is. And thank you again for listening. It's always a delight to see our downloads each week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to connect with you, Bridget? Yes, yeah, suburbansandcastles.com and you, Jules? Is thepleasurenutritionist.com. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.